How do you get it without Shemaim in one second? Live your life with one question in mind all the time. According to the Torah, allowed, not allowed. That's it. Operate your life that way. Meaning, you only go to XYZ place if it's allowed. If it's not allowed, it's not a question of should I or should I not go. You only do business with Mr. Jones if it's allowed to do, not if it's profitable to do. The point being is that a person must learn Alakha, must learn Musal, must learn Chumash, must learn all of these different things in order to not only know what's allowed, what's not allowed, but also how to start having a Jewish mind where you're able to figure it out simply by the basic foundation that you're learning. Once you understand basics of allowed and not allowed, you can build a lot on top of it. But if you don't understand allowed, not allowed, then everything doesn't make any sense. There's no rhyme or reason for anything. So if you operate your life in such a way where you only move, any move, if it's allowed, and as long as it's not allowed, it's not even a question of whether you do it or not. It's not a consideration. If that's the way you operate your life, that's the beginning of your Hachamai. Like if I, okay, hey, listen, I want to go to this deli to go buy coffee. You can buy the coffee that's in his refrigerator that has a kosher sign on it. That's not a problem. But the coffee that he's making, that's fresh coffee, if it's not a kosher place, not allowed. Why is it not allowed? Because there's certain ingredients that can be in there that can be problematic and so on and so forth. Now, can you find a rabbi that is lenient and says that even that's allowed? Sure you can. But do you really want to play with leniency your whole life? Like, you have to understand, there are certain battles you should fight. And in certain battles, don't bother. Like, you're really going to battle over coffee? Like, you want to go up to Shemaim and they're going to ask you a question like, Hey, Steve, why'd you drink that coffee? You want to have the debate in Shemaim? Are you out of your mind? The less time at the bed, the better. No question. Why would you fight that battle? Oh, it's leniency. There are certain things you gotta fight. There are certain things that you wanna go for the leniency. There are certain things that you need to do certain things. But not for that, not for stupid coffee. You understand? So choose your battles right. Same thing with marriage, same thing with chinuch of kids. There are certain things you have to put your foot down and there are certain things that's just not worth it. Like I told you five times, stop telling her she's a bad cook. It's not going to make her a better one. She keeps crying every day, every week. Stop it. She's going to divorce you in the end because of food. But that's it. I don't know. Certain people, they just have to, like something's wrong with them. They have to like make a point. Fight, fight every battle. Don't fight every battle. Certain battles are not worth it. Certain battles are not worth it. So same thing with Torah. Certain battles are not worth it. Certain leniencies are not worth it. Sometimes you need a leniency. That's when you go to the rabbi. That's to me. Chacham knows what he's doing. And he'll tell you if you're allowed. Not allowed. Chachamim say that a person should think of the Malach HaMavit. On top of his neck with a sword at all times. And if he says, and if he says, no, I don't feel it. Oh, that's because you already cut off your head. It's already because you're spiritually dead. So a person, yes, a person should be scared at all times of the Creator. But again, also know that the Creator knows that you have certain desires, you have certain weaknesses, and He rewards you for overcoming them. He rewards you for overcoming them. You're not just doing it for no reason. But again, you have to take HaKadosh Baruch Hu seriously. You can't play games with them. You can't go and just decide to uh, uh, make your own rule book and I'll deal with it later type of mentality. It won't work out so well for you, not in this world, not in the next. And that's really the goal for all of these, all of these shulim. It's just to simply have that basic sense of, uh, of, of gratitude to Hashem, fear of Hashem, shame, shame of, of, of sinning, and uh, a desire to be good. That's, that's really the, uh, the ultimate goal, is the desire to be good. You know, if we desire to be good, we'll succeed. If we desire not to be good, we're already succeeding, unfortunately. The said Hashem, we'll all succeed in doing good, wanting to be good, and sanctifying a Kadosh Baruch Hu's name and bring more Kedusha to the world. Baruch Adonai Amen ve'amen. 
B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha, by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Bo Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat